Uh, another big topic with immigration is day labor. Yes. Now you have the day labor in your community. They keep on moving from one corner to the next, from one corner to the next. They're being chased away, uh, and not just by uh, uh, other, uh, unfortunately, other Americans, but by the police. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen the latest attack on the day labor in, on Long Island, uh, end up two dead, you know, just from the beginning of the year. Um, uh, is there anything that we can do to, to, to protect the rights? And do they have any rights of course, in our country? Of course, they have rights, you know, they have human rights. They have rights um, to work. Any, it's interesting, I think you ask any immigrant group, why did you come to America? No one is saying to have a party. Mm -hmm. Everyone comes here to work for a better life, um, to be able to provide for their families back home, and chances are that if they can do it better in their country, they would go back. Um, the reality is that no one should have to experience any type of violence because you're looking for work, let alone for any other reason. Um, I think that there are many options that we can look into, but it's something that has to be in tandem with our state elected officials and state government and our municipalities. Um, when we see things of such barbaric abuses happening out in Long Island, it saddens me a great deal, where I feel that the leaders here in New York City should really be able to provide the support. We all know that New York City is a safe haven, mm -hmm. so if someone goes and makes a report at a, a police department or at a hospital, mm -hmm. they're completely protected and their immigration status has nothing to do with them being able to receive services. And we punish this as a hate crime? Absolutely, I think mm -hmm. it should be. Um, but it also goes back to that type of reporting. What is? What are these police officers taking into account? What story? What version of the story are they listening mm -hmm. to? Um, and oftentimes, and, and that is why I really, um, uh, in particular, with one of the victims that was from Ecuador, the, con the Ecuadorian consulate really stood up and said, you know, we can't. We're not going to yeah. stand by this abuse. And this is where our consulate generals really help partnered with our elected with us as elected officials that we're able to, to support measures such as those and hate crimes need to mm -hmm. be properly um, reported and, and, and made sure that, that they're uh, punished to the full extent of the law. Very good. Now other topic that you really champion one issue is housing. You want to provide affordable housing. Everybody wants to provide affordable housing. Every elected <laughs> official wants to do the same thing. But it's easier said than done. Absolutely. Builders build for profit. And they can't build and sell their products cheap because they can't make any profit. Uh, how will you be able to get them to really rent for affordable um, rent? Well, interestingly enough, I believe that builders build in New York City because they're going to make money. If someone was coming to New York City to build, it's because they couldn't, they didn't want to do it in Pennsylvania, they didn't want to do it in any other state. Sure. So what I, my job as a legislator is to ensure that if you're going to build in my community, you need to come to the table with an affordable housing plan. I'm not here to say how it's more profitable for you or, no, you need to have an affordable housing plan. In my district in particular, I have no, very limited affordable housing. We don't have a... a have no space. We ha well... I think that we can be creative. There's mm -hmm. room to build up. Right. There's there's buildings that are not adequately used. If someone comes in and is creative, especially, and if we talk about Willits Point, where we're having a $6 billion development, and for us not to advocate for affordable housing, you know, I'm sorry, I understand that we need a developer, but that developer mm -hmm. needs to understand from the beginning. And I think that's a conversation that we need to turn around. Not about how or you know, how can we have a builder make it affordable. No, the builder needs to come to us and say, this is how I'm going to make it affordable. Right. And this is why it makes sense. Because that's our job. It's to defend right. and to advocate for the people, not to advocate necessarily just for the developers. How can you guarantee the, the community, your own community, that after the builder build a huge complex and then he said it's going to be affordable housing everybody gets so excited and then when the building is all done and ready to rent he said they're going to rent it for market rate well i think that's when we need to partner the developer with a nonprofit organization that could ensure this stock these 20%, this 25% of affordable housing, they're going to be the watchdogs of that. And we're going to ensure that this is exactly what you committed to is going to happen, and also tying their tax breaks. Because I believe that as developers, we need to make it affordable for them. We can give them, they, oftentimes they, they apply for a 20-year tax break. There's a whole bunch of tax 
packages that can be made available mm -hmm. um, for a developer to, as a stimulus if that's what they need. However, we need to tie that with ensuring that, that those apartments are affordable and not just affordable for five years. Mm -hmm. You know, affordable for a prolonged amount of time so that we have stability in our communities because my community is very transient. And I don't think that it's transient because people want to move out. It's just transient because of the, the amount of rent that is charged. When you have a two-bedroom apartment for $1,400 and someone is making $1,400 a month, they, they can only take that pressure exactly. for so long. Exactly. With those beautiful words, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman. Julissa Ferrara. It was really a pleasure. Thank and you. thank you all very much for watching us. Uh, our next guest, actually, is going to be Councilman Robert Jackson, the chairman of the Education Committee of New York City. So keep watching. <laughs>